Welcome to the Mark Silver Show, Advancing Your Photography, brought to you by SanDisk. We connect you with photographers who have mastered their craft, sharing their insight and showing you their photography tips so you can go right out and use them. We're here with San Francisco-based stock photographer John Lund, who's been shooting for over 30 years. His awards include CA Magazine Photo Annual, PDN Picks, Western Art Directors Club, Print Magazine, and others. His work has been featured in Photo District News, Professional Photographer Magazine, Design Graphics, Photo Media, and numerous other publications. His masterclass book has been published in three languages and his gift books in seven. John, thanks for joining me on my photo show. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Okay, tell us about your style of photography and the type of work you love to do. If I had to put a label on my photography, I'd say it's a, a clean, graphic, conceptual style in which I create uh, new photographic realities to illustrate concepts. And, the, and a, a major thing for me is that I want people to really enjoy looking at the image. So in terms of photography, what's your biggest passion? Creating those new photographic realities. I like to create things that without the use of Photoshop and digital tools, you wouldn't see. But they're done seamlessly so that, uh, so that you don't, your first impression is not, oh, that's Photoshop. Your first impression is, wow, that's cool. So John, any special photograph that comes to mind that really illustrates that? Well, a fun one that comes to mind is a shot I did of a lion trainer with his head in a lion's mouth. I Googled the image to see, you know, to see what it really looked like as kind of a guide, and I couldn't, I couldn't actually find one. That's the kind of image I really like to do. So um, I ended up being the model on that, and when people look at that image, they go, they turn to me and they go, wow, did you really put your head in the lion's mouth? Did you? <laughs> no, I didn't. But uh, that's the kind of image that I'm interested in making, one that people delight in and that they're, they're not really sure or they don't think that it was done with Photoshop. So, John, can you take us through the steps that you follow to create one of your images? Sure. Normally, the process would be first I come up with the concept. Uh -huh. And now, keep in mind that I'm a stock photographer, so I'm doing this with, uh, you know, I have a passion for it, but there's also a mercenary aspect to me. Sure. So I do a search to make sure that that image is either not out there or not already overdone, or that I can create a version that's going to be new and different. Once I've established that that, that idea is one that I want to run with, I'll pre-visualize it in as much detail as possible. I'll even create a sketch because I want to look at each part in that picture and figure out how am I going to accomplish that. In the case of the lion, for example, where am I going to come up with the circus ring that I'm going to be shooting it in? So I have to take you know, the overall thing in mind and then as I'm shooting for it, I have to make sure each part is going to be the right angle, the right lighting, everything's going to be consistent to create that final image that's convincing. Okay, John, let's get under the hood of your camera for a second. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your card. Well, I use SanDisk cards. Um, for me, when the photo shoot is over, what's on that card is generally worth more than all my camera equipment. Yep. So why trust it to anything but the best? And how about size? I prefer the larger cards. Right now I'm using primarily 16 gigabyte cards. Okay. Um, tell you a little story about why I like the larger cards. Sure. I was traveling through Mongolia, this is a couple of years ago, and I chanced upon a scene where they were reenacting a, a Genghis Khan battle. Hmm. They had hundreds of guys on horseback, fully authentically dressed. You know, they've got swords, they're galloping around, clouds of dust. It was, it was amazing. It was like, whoa, where'd this come from? So I'm shooting away like crazy, and there's a bunch of us, and we're all jostling each other, and I'm shooting, and about halfway through, maybe a little more than halfway through, my eight gig card was full. So I pull it out, you know, and I'm trying to keep my camera from getting all dusty and I'm trying to keep my, my position and all. And I put a new card in there and I format it and I shot, you know, another couple of gigs and then, then the whole thing was over. It was at that point I realized that somehow I had put the same card back in the camera oh. and reformatted it. <laughs> Losing two thirds of this once in a lifetime, you know, every thousand years they're going to recreate this battle, right? So I learned a lesson and I prefer the larger cards now. Good point. John, what are some tips for our viewers who want to create images that will stop people in their tracks? <laughs> well, that's a good question. Um, some of the things that, that work, I think, is the unexpected. If you, if you do a twist on something you've never seen before, one of the little rules that I have for myself when I'm thinking up ideas is, what is the reverse 
of whatever it is you're thinking of. Um, I'll give you um, an example of that. I had done a trapeze, a flying trapeze shot where a person's catching another one. Illustrates concepts like teamwork, risk, that sort of thing. And then I thought, well, what's a twist? Maybe they're not catching them. Why would they, you know, when it hit me, a sumo wrestler might be perfect. So I created an image. I hired a sumo wrestler, based a series of shots around that, and one of the shots is a guy on a flying trapeze about to catch a sumo wrestler. So getting back to your question, you know, a twist on the obvious, something unexpected. Any final advice for photographers who just want to become better at their craft? Uh, I would say that if you want to become better at your craft, obviously you want to look at images. You want to look at them with a critical eye, though. You don't, you don't want to just look at that image and say, oh, I really like that. Find out why you like it. And then see if you can incorporate that kind of work into your own work. The other thing is, I'd say, is set the bar extremely high for yourself. You, you know, if there's anything at all mediocre in your work, get it out. Get it out of your book. Get it out of your mind. Shoot for the, various high, the very highest thing you can on every level of it. John, thank you so much for joining me on my photo show. It's been really great to have you. Subscribe to our blog where I'll give you updates on our show along with tips and other cool stuff. Also, check out John's site, johnlund.com, for a closer look at his work. I'd like to thank Sandus for sponsoring our show. Tune in to our next episode where we get another look at a photographer's world. Until then, this is Mark Silver reminding you to get out and capture your own images of life.